Hey guys, I'm Shaf with Polygon Gaming and welcome to part two of this three part series of Crash Course. We're going to be talking about the Triforce model today. For those of you who missed it or maybe just need a refresher, the Triforce model is the idea that you can only invest in three things in StarCraft. All the things that you can invest in fit into one of these three categories. First one we did was Army. Today, we're gonna to be doing economy. And of course, the final one is technology. We'll define those in a moment. First, let's start with economy. Economy is referring almost exclusively to your mineral income and using like mineral-based defenses and taking more bases. The goal is really to stay alive while getting as many workers and bases as possible without dying. Your second investment whether that be army or technology both of those are different ways of staying alive while doing an economic centric style this is really going to center mostly around the mid game but we'll talk about that in a moment we are going to be looking at a style that is primarily centric on economy followed by army followed by technology and I think really the best example of this is Sauron style Zerg. Zerg really have an advantage when it comes to going for an economic style play. The main advantage is the fact that they can make more than one worker per base in a given cycle. So if they focus primarily on economy, they can then snowball that and use that economy in a huge number of ways, in fact going way more technology than say for a Zerg who went for a less economic build. So some of the benchmarks of an economic centric build tends to be the number of queens and mineral based defenses that you're looking at. And in particular a Sauron style Zerg is going to you employ more mineral based defenses whereas a technological and economy style zerg is going to use more gas based defenses that's really what we're looking at here is mineral based to support your overwhelming economy or gas based defense to support your overwhelming economy again looking at sauron style zerg first this is going to be on belshir vestige and we quickly see a lot of queens being produced and over time we're going to see this creep spread just get massively out of hand the reason for this is there's more than enough queens to inject which leaves a lot of extra creep slaves in order to just lay it down so we see solar who's honestly one of the best sauron style zergs out there he uses this style in pretty much every matchup he can afford to either get upgrades or better units it's going to be hard for him to get both so we see him getting uh, roaches, banelings, and stuff like that pretty early on, and then no real tier 2 tech for quite some time. He's going to use this roach, baneling, and upgrades style to grab that third base, hold that third base, grab a fourth base, all of this very, very fast compared to other builds. If you'll notice at two minutes and 45 seconds, that's gonna be a really important time, but at two minutes and 45 seconds, before the natural is even that saturated, we are seeing the Zerg go ahead and take a third base. Now, this is probably the most popular style right now. This is what most pros are doing, and it's very powerful. At no point am I saying that some builds are better than others. I really just want you guys to get an idea of how builds interact with one another so comparing these two types of builds that are actually both going to go for a heavy ling baneling mutilisk style one incorporates more roaches they're going to have the same units the same composition if you were to tell someone on battle net chat hey yeah i went ling bling muta i went ling bling roach muta you know you could really describe either one of these games with the sole exception of the roaches however these units are going to be employed in vastly different ways, and that's really what we're going to be looking at here. This game starts out with low-tech Roach Baneling upgrades while taking so many bases. The number of bases that we see Solar taking not only means more mineral income for him, 
it means that we're going to have that moment where things flip-flop. You remember in the last video, we talked about it. If you go economy and army, eventually you're going to flip-flop and grab a lot of technology very quickly. Well, that's where taking all these extra bases comes in. He gets access to a fifth and sixth gas way, way before he would with other builds. The mutalisks are going to come later than the other build we're going to look at. However, he gets a lot more of them. He can afford to trade with them. And what's even more important, because Zerg tech switches so easily, all of our units come from the hatchery. It doesn't matter. As long as you've got hatcheries, you can make units. Of course, you need the technology building. With Terran, it's a little bit different. With Protoss, it's a lot of bit different. They have to invest in the structures for higher level tech. So if you're bouncing between you know, roaches and banelings and mutalists going from one to the other in, in your attacks and your aggression, how you're being active with them, it becomes really hard for a Terran to know exactly what to make and make sure he's got the right balance of units. That is something that is very Zerg specific, and this is where solar really begins to shine. Even in this game, you'll see like Roach, Ling, Daneling, Ravager, Mutalisk, all attacking all these different angles, uh, contesting his ground, able to knock things back very easily uh, in a defensive posture. For the most part of the early game, Sauron styles are, or even, you know, any kind of economy army based style is going to be fairly defensive. But in the early mid game, that defense kind of explodes and just all out aggression, multi pronged attacks, and it really doesn't stop. Something Solar does quite a bit is using Ling Baneling drops or Roach drops and things like that, really getting the best out of these lower tech, lower tier units. So, by going for an earlier army, Sauron style Zerg is able to take more bases. By having so many bases, he gives his opponent a lot of places a lot of opportunities to attack. Having this much army means he can scout it coming, he can already have his units spread out all over the place and in the right positions to shift and defend. If he were trying to take this many bases with something a little more technological like we're going to look at here, he wouldn't have the units to cover that much space and ultimately would lose the base. And what we're looking at here is essentially the exact same style up until around 2 minutes and 45 seconds. At 2.45, we see Risk going ahead and actually getting a layer. At 2.45 in the Solar game, he was taking a third base. And fast forwarding just a little bit, you see that as the Spire's finishing, Risk is starting to bank a little bit, but he's saving for those Mutalists. The Mutalists start producing, and right around that time, there is an attack on what could have been or should have been his third. The Terran comes in and would have been able to completely dominate that particular position. However, not having a base there allows Risk to pull those units with his faster lings and really just disorient his opponent, poking in and out, buying himself time for the Mutalists to finish. The Mutalists are what allows this defense to really happen. The Lings are there tanking for them, the DPS, the damage, the shutdown is the Mutalisk, and of course, that's gonna shut down the Medivac. With just a pure Ling army, the Medivac picks up and is super annoying for a really, really long time. So by going for a faster Spire, this gives him a few advantages. And just talking a little bit about today's meta, today's meta includes a little bit more of an Hellion opener behind some of this Reaper or you know fast marine play. Well, Hellions can't shoot up. So getting the spire faster means you're gonna be able to shut down any kind of Hellion harassment as soon as it starts moving out. You can attack it the whole way out. You can force missile turrets in the mineral lines. It's going to delay the third, it's going to slow down the map control and really put the Terran on the defensive. This of course allows you to take bases and again you get to the same situation where you know you're on the three to four bases and you're getting the fifth and sixth gas only you're going to get the fifth and sixth gas later because you got the third base later. 
but you have more map control. You can be a little more offensive. And now you're going to be a little more in your opponent's base. So rather than the mass mutalisk that we saw in Solar's game, now we are looking more at a fast mutalisk. Then we see the double evolution chamber coming, now we're seeing the upgrades. So there's still an emphasis on the technology, it's just flip-flopping a little bit. But what we're seeing now are a huge swell of lings, a lot of banelings. There's more of an emphasis on this Ling speed-based army to wipe out all the ground forces. The Mutalisks are mostly a harassment thing and something to shut down drops to keep the Zerg safe, but also give him a chance to harass these add-ons, to make sure that the missile turrets are plentiful. Just one missile turret isn't going to be able to deal with this. And all of these missile turrets cost minerals. Those are minerals he couldn't put into a command center. Or if he built the command center, he wasn't able to build the marines. Which, again, means he's not going to be able to move out onto the map. He can't harass you. You're safer. So really what this all comes down to is how you want to deal with your third. Are you going to use extra larva from a faster third base centered around that 2 minute and 45 second mark? That includes roaches, banelings, speedlings, or are you going to defend your third using mutalisks? Are you going to defend it using the higher technology, maybe infestors, whatever you think is viable and whatever the meta is at the time? That's all that it really comes down to. In some situations, I personally would definitely prefer having roaches, banelings, speedlings. I can think of you know, a couple off the top of my head, Hellbat all-ins, Cyclone Hellion all-ins, uh, Marine all-ins on like four racks where he takes all the SCVs and just throws them at me. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to want to be on Mutalisk Tech or trying to get there when something like that comes at me. But in other situations, particularly situations involving a lot of drops, I would love to have Mutalisks. And you can never really be 100% certain what your opponent's going to do around 2 minutes and 45 seconds. It's going to be what you like to do. It's going to be how you like to play your game and what decisions you're going to make to shape the game itself. So are you the type of player who wants to get your mutalisks out a little bit faster, be able to shut down drops? And here's really the cool part. With mutalisks, you're going to force your opponent to make missile charts back at home. If he doesn't, you can wreck SCV lines all day long. If you're getting them fast, you're going to have map control for a very long time. And you're going to be able to take extra bases. You're going to be able to take them really, really fast. Now, this may also provoke your opponent into trying to kill you and kind of doing a little bit of an all-in. And that's fine. That's why you're switching into the Ling Baneling as soon as you've got a big flock of mutalists out. Like, you know, your first 14 mutalists that you bank for... Boom, make that, go into Ling, Bane Ling. If your opponent tries to all in you, boom, you wipe them out, game over. If your opponent doesn't make missile turrets, take out S SCVs, he's going to try to all in you, boom, wipe them out, game over. And if he makes missile turrets, take two bases, go make everything you want, and then you're in the late game. Boom, easy peasy. The difference is with Sauron Salzer, you have to fight tooth and nail for every base. You're always on the defensive while at the same time trying to do these little pokes here and there, little drops here and there, run-bys here and there, all these little things to get small advantages. 
With a economy technology model, you're taking a lot more risk for a lot more reward. For those of you who don't know, we've got a show match coming up for you on March 29th at 11 p.m. Eastern time. It's going to be dun dun dun. Innovation versus Dark. I know you guys are probably excited as I am. You can check out all the information you want. I'll put a link in the description. That'll take you to the Match Arena page where you guys can enter a raffle for a free StarCraft 2 Replay Stats account as well as purchase some awesome goodies to enjoy f during the event. All purchases will go towards supporting the event or, you know, if you guys are just feeling generous, you can always donate raw hard cash straight to the prize pool now guys we are going to run these events as often as we can but we need your help we've got our patreon set up so that we are collecting seed money for future events we want 75 dollars per event at 25 dollars per month on patreon we are going to run one event every three months. If we can get up to $75 a month on Patreon, we'll run one event per month. There are some great rewards. I'll scroll them across the screen here. And you guys could have a chance to hang out with us, get coaching from us, even cast with us. All you got to do is be a supporter on Patreon. Thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for supporting these events, for helping fund interviews, and just for coming and tuning into the content. Your presence here means everything. If you don't have the money laying around to donate to these things, that's fine. Share it with your friends. Help us spread the word. Get these videos out there, guys. I am Shaf with Polygon Gaming. We couldn't do it without Polygoners like you. Thank you. I mean that. This is part of our series called Crash Course, an educational series mostly for Zerg, but a little bit of a treat for everyone when possible, called Crash Course. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.